guys haven't even heard my talk yet. <laughs> So hi everyone, I'm Alex. Um, I'm a senior manager of community development at Vimeo. And today I want to talk to you about how you can learn from your community to build a better product and why being really, really organized about it is key. So first I want to tell you a little bit about Vimeo and our community, how it's evolved over the years. Um, so Vimeo was founded in 2004 by a group of filmmakers who wanted a place where they could share their creative work and personal moments. Now Vimeo has 35 million registered members and 600,000 paid subscribers. Um, and they are responsible for creating some of the most awe-inspiring videos on the internet. Vimeo is different. Unlike other video sites, uh, our company makes money through subscriptions. Um, from members who want more upload space and advanced features. And we don't make money by monetizing our community's content by throwing ads on it. So it's especially important for us to have a product that our community loves using that they're willing to pay for. Um, and I just want to point out, this, this video is actually on our website, on our homepage. And uh, there are two guys who met on Vimeo and started messaging back and forth and collaborated. and created these amazing time lapses of Yosemite, which is now on our homepage, so yeah. And they actually sent us pizza a couple months ago because they just wanted to show like how much they loved us. Um, so that just kind of blows me away. Um, so when I say that Vimeo is different, this is what cat videos look like on Vimeo. So, Vimeo has remained a relatively small company for years. Um, and we catered to a, ne a small niche of filmmakers who wanted a supportive community of like-minded people. Um, this is our team in 2009. There were about 20 people who worked at Vimeo at that time. They all sat in one room. Product and community were right next to each other. So it was really easy for us to stay on the same page and for our user feedback to make its way like organically to our product team. Starting in 2012, our community start grew substantially. Um, so we had to pivot from being a smaller company with a really intimate, passionate user base to a larger company with a growing and broader user base while still trying to remain true to our original community. So there are now 175 people who work at Vimeo, and that means that there are lots of people who are involved in every single decision that gets made. So for our team, that means we can't just say, hey, we got this really great idea from some of our users, we should do it. We really need to paint a very clear picture of exactly what our community wants and needs from us and why we should implement it. So, uh, I want to talk to you about how we learn from our community to make our product better. And uh, it starts by specializing your team and getting incredibly organized. So there are now 20 people on Vimeo's community team. And as we grew, it made sense for our team to specialize. So people would focus on different areas of the product. There's trust and safety. <laughs> Um, and so our support specialists are responsible for things like tricky escalations. Um, they maintain all of our internal help documentation as well as our external help documentation. So FAQs, macros, and as well our, our user feedback docs. And we found, oops, sorry. <laughs> and we found that by uh, specializing our team, there were a couple of benefits. One, we can det detect bugs really quickly because any potential issues are being routed just through one person rather than being distributed amongst the team. And uh, we have a much deeper knowledge of exactly what our users want from us in every specific area of our product. Um, it's actually not uncommon for support specialists to be involved in early product meetings so that they can provide their perspective on what the community would actually want them to do. And we found that by becoming really organized, 
we gained credibility in our company and were able to move product changes forward a lot faster. So as your community grows, so does your support load. And you know, it's really tempting to focus all of your attention on just tackling your queues. But as your queues are getting maybe a little bit out of control, you still need to factor in time to document all of the feedback that you're getting along with the bug reports and the, you know, give me a refund and whatever types of emails you're getting. Um, our support specialists can spend up to 40% of their time outside of the queues maintaining their documents about their product area. So that's just something that you want to factor in as you're scaling your team. Once you've found the system that you want to use um, to document all of your feedback, now you need to share it and share it as often as possible. So as community managers, we are our member advocates. Our communities uh, rely on us to collect all of that feedback that we're getting and to analyze it. And our product team relies on us to do the same so that they can act on it and make a better product. Once you know what your top feedback is, um, find every opportunity you can to share it. We have a monthly report that I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, that we send around to all of our heads of departments and our product team. And then we try to bring it up at any moment that we can. And what you'll find is that as you keep repeating your message, at some point it becomes collective knowledge and other people will start spreading your message for you. So respectful reiteration, that's, that's how we do things at Vimeo. Um, so this is our top community pain points in feature request document. Um, so we list out our, our top requests and issues and they're color coded according to volume and impact. And we've also added a column for our roadmap just to show if we're actually planning to address any of these issues. And any request is you know, a feature that our, our product doesn't currently have. Um, and any issue is uh, a pain point that our members are coming across regularly as they use our product. So for us, that might be um, confusion over how our privacy options work. And we will make this available after the talk so you can take a closer look as well. Um, our product team really loves this presentation of our, our top feedback because it makes it immediately clear where the gaps are, how we should prioritize, and where there are, uh, where, is there, where there's room for us to improve. So we get about 12,000 cases per month, and we consider 20 emails about the same feature request as high volume. And that might not seem like a really high number, but if you think about it, for every person who actually contacts you, there are many other people who won't bother. So every piece of feedback really matters. Um, and for us, high impact would be an issue that users are incredibly angry about, or if it's something that's really difficult for our community managers to resolve, a good rule of thumb is the more clicks, the worse it is. You don't, you don't want too many clicks to resolve an issue. So you don't want to burn out your team with all the doom and gloom, our product's broken, we don't do this thing that everyone really wants. Um, you're getting a lot of negative and positive reinforcement from your community, so you want to make sure you're also sharing the good vibes. Um, so at Vimeo, we call that Loveio, love plus Vimeo, and we have a monitor in our office that's right by the community team where we show recent Loveio that our team has received so people can walk, you know, they can see it when they walk by and hopefully it makes them feel special and good. And finally, you can include your community um, in your product process by actually testing with them. So usability and beta testing are now part of every major product launch at Vimeo. Uh, if you're not familiar with usability testing, the basic premise is you can bring five to 10 users in and have them perform a couple of tasks on your product. 
And you want them to talk out loud through the process so you can get a sense of what they don't understand, what's confusing. And the goal is to find any major roadblocks uh, and see if people find your product confusing to use in any way. So the benefits of usability testing, you can uh, discover any major design flaws before releasing it to your whole user base. Um, you can incorporate early feedback to improve it before releasing it. And it's a really great way to show someone that you're actually listening. So what we like to do at Vimeo is, because we're documenting all of that feedback we're getting, we can actually find users who requested a feature, ask them to come in, test the new feature that we built to address that need, and you know, find out what they want. So I think a personal invite into your office is a great way to show people that you are listening and that you care. Um, so a few pointers if you have not uh, done any usability testing before. The first step before you invite people in is to meet with your product team and to come up with a task list. So you wanna make sure that, you know, what are the specific parts of this flow that we wanna test? Um, and let's make sure that we have a standardized test that everyone's going through so that we can compare them afterwards. Once your usability session is started, um, I like to warm up for maybe five minutes, ask them, how's your day going? How long have you been using Vimeo? What kinds of video do you like to watch? Just, just kind of chit chat, put them at ease, and reassure them as well that we're not testing them, we're testing the product. If they don't understand how it works, that's actually an issue with our product, and that's why we want them to come in. And it's not about them being too dumb to understand or feeling really pressured because you're watching them. So you're really trying to make them feel comfortable and open up. Um, you also want to avoid any leading questions. So let's say we're testing a new upload flow. I would want to phrase it something like, um, okay, let's say that you, you have a video that you just edited and it's ready to go. How would you go about getting it on our site? I wouldn't want to say, hey, which button do you think you would click to upload your video? You don't want to tip them off that there's even a button that they're looking for. Um, and you want it to be really goal-oriented rather than like step-oriented, even if you are, you're looking at it step-by-step, step, but as a user, they're really thinking about like, okay, what's the thing I want to actually achieve in the end? So you want it to feel as natural as possible. We like to involve a member from our product um, or design team in usability sessions. I think as community managers, we're really used to hearing from our users one-on-one, -on -one, and other teams are a little bit more removed from that process. And watching someone struggle to use your product or tell you why they would never use a feature you just worked on for a couple of weeks, uh, that really hits home and it resonates. So it's nice to bring them into the fold and make sure they can watch that and it'll really hit home. And of course, uh, take lots of notes. What you're really looking for overall are trends. So you want to see if three people struggled with the same task. Okay, so then you can assume more people will struggle with the task once we release it to our whole user base. Um, you might get some good one-off feedback, but you're really looking for what comes up over and over. By bringing in five users to test a new feature before releasing it to 35 million users, we can prevent our pain points from spreading. And you know, unaddressed pain points mean more, more emails, more angry tweets, people abandoning your product. You really want to prevent those from happening before you release a product. So what does this look like in action? Well, up until a year ago, there was actually no way for Vimeo users to delete more than one video at a time. Not a big deal for most of our users. But remember, we have paid members who are uploading hundreds or thousands of videos, and often they're using Vimeo for professional purposes. 
So if they can't efficiently manage their content, that's a huge problem. Once we specialized our team and took a deeper dive into our feedback, it became immediately clear that uh, while this was a low to medium volume issue, it was really a high impact issue because our users were very angry about it that they couldn't do this pretty basic thing. Um, so we were able to communicate that to the product team and we all agreed this was something we needed to fix as soon as possible. Thus, the organizer was born. We knew that we wanted to test this with our community. So leading up to the launch, um, the community team kept an eye out for any emails asking, how do I delete more than one video at a time? Or why don't you have this yet? And we added that to a list of all of our other users who had requested this feature. When we had a working prototype that we were testing internally, we reached out to those users and invited them to a beta test. So if you're not able to bring people in-house for a usability session, beta testing is another great way to have your users try out a product and give you their feedback. So we gave, um, we gave these users beta access for a week, and many of them had been waiting for it so they could actually delete hundreds or thousands of videos, and we let them know that this is working, so anything you do will affect your account. Um, and the feedback, so we gave them a survey when they were done, and the feedback we got was overwhelmingly very positive. Um, we uncovered a couple of UI issues that we could fix before releasing it to everyone. And we also got new feature requests that we added to the product roadmap for the organizer. So it's all a cycle. And this ended up being one of our most successful product launches. So to summarize, it's important to specialize and organize your team as you grow so you can keep on top of all the feedback you're receiving. Don't just scale your support, please scale your feedback as well. Our communities and our product teams really rely on us to have our fingers on the pulse of what our communities want. Collaborate with your product team and find out what they wanna know from you, how often they wanna hear it, uh, we have that top pain points report uh, that we send out every month, but maybe there's a different volume of how often they want to hear from you. Respectfully reiterate whenever possible and prevent those pain points from spreading. Thank you. <laughs>